Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go over the Maya Graph Editor and tell you everything you need to know to start animating right now. Alright, so I've set up a little animation here with this uh, ball rig that you can get on bloopanimation.com slash ball rig. And it's not a very interesting animation. It's a ball that goes from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen and also they're like jumping up and down a little bit. So let's see what's going on in the graph editor. If you've seen the previous videos, you know that I like this setup here of the graph editor on the bottom and then two windows on top, one for the camera view and one for the perspective view. But since we're not really using a camera here, I'm gonna close the, this window and we're just gonna work with the graph editor and the perspective view. That way we'll get a little more room for the, for the graph editor. So what do we have here in the graph editor? It's divided into two main parts. The left part is full with all the keyframes that we have listed. And the right part, the main part, is showing us those keyframes in graph form. It looks a little complicated, like math or whatever, but it's really... It's really simple and once you get used to looking at the graph editor, your animation will get so much better and easier. So what are all these things here? Currently, I've selected the main controller, the main mover for the ball. So we're seeing here all the attributes that are currently keyed, which means there's a keyframe on them. So the three translates, so X, Y, Z, the rotation and the scale. Now, the reason we have keys on all of them is because I pressed S to create the first keyframe. And as you know, S sets a keyframe for all attribute. Uh, but since we're not using rotation and scale and visibility uh, as an animation, like, we can just delete them. So now there's no keys, there's no animation on anything but the translate. And look here on the left, all we have left is the three translate curves. Now you see that for us to be able to see the curves, we need to actually select the controller that we want to look at. Uh, we can look at each of them separately, just the X, just the Y, or the Z. So what do these curves really mean? To answer that, we're going to look at the right side for a little bit. So we're seeing three curves here. Uh, only two of them are actually doing something. The translate X is not doing anything because our ball is moving from left to right. Uh, so the, the curve that controls left to right is the translate X. The curve that controls up and down is the Y and back and forth is the Z. Now we're not doing anything with the Z so we can delete them. Uh, we can select the curve and press delete. Now there's no animation on the Z curve. This is the same as doing this. So what is the ball really doing? Let's see. He goes up and down, left to right. I understand why in the translate why we see up and down. That's because he's going up. At this point, he's the highest. And then it goes down to the lowest point. And then it goes back to the middle. But why is it showing up and down in the translate X? Well, that's because the curves are not really showing up and down physically. They're just showing an increase or decrease of value. And because the translate Y controls the up and down, it happens to be that when it's highest, that means that the ball is at its highest location. But for translate X that controls left to right, the reason it's lower here, it's because he is more to the left here. And then as we go to the, to the end of our scene, he is moving right. So our graph goes from uh, minus seven to 8.6 so it's doing this long journey so the main thing you need to understand about these, these curves is that they do not represent high or low or left or right they just represent increase and decrease of value that's really important to remember so now that we look at these two curves together it makes sense we understand what's going on we can tell what's going on even without looking at the scene we can tell that whatever object has these curves is going to be moving from left to right while going up and down a little bit. So that's how you read the curves. And the reason you need to be comfortable reading them is because really quickly, 
the curve editor, the graph editor is going to be filled with a ton of curves. So you need to be comfortable with them. So how do you navigate in the graph editor? Well, it's, it's pretty similar to navigating in the perspective view. You hold the command button and press middle mouse to move around. That's, that's just for, for basic navigation. If you use the command button and right click your mouse while holding it, you can just drag and zoom in, zoom out while holding the mouse right click button. So that's the two basic uh, navigation methods, middle mouse and right click. Uh, another thing that I really like uh, are two shortcuts that you should remember, pressing A or F. A puts all your curves in focus, that is short for all, and F focuses on one specific thing that you wanted to focus on. So say I selected this one and pressed F, now we're just looking at that. If I selected these two, these three, it's going to focus on that. We have very little curves here, so you don't really see the effect of it. But it's really comfortable to be able to just focus on a few, on a few keyframes. Another thing that's really helpful for navigating is pressing the Command and Shift button together and then dragging with your right mouse button. That kind of lets you to, to scale horizontally or vertically your curves so you can zoom in a more effective way. So we know that, that these dots represent our keys. We can see it here on the timeline, which we've covered in the previous video. Uh, every place that we have this red line means we have a key. The way those, these keys are represented here in the graph editor are by these little black dots. But what if we want to add keyframes? We know that we can just go somewhere and press S, and then it's going to add a keyframe for all the attributes, but we don't want to add for like, a key for everything. We just want to add a key to what we're working on. We learned that we can press Shift W to only key the translate attributes, but that also is not what we want because we don't want to just key all of the translate attributes. We just want to key a specific curve. So there's actually an easier way that you should learn, and that's holding the I button while selecting a curve and then middle mousing wherever you want to add a, a keyframe. So you can add a keyframe all around the curve and then move it around. How do you move it around? You need to be on the Move tool. Now you can move your curve around. Now why is that ball moving? It's because we're currently on the Translate X curve and that control is moving left to right. So if I go higher, the ball is moving to the, to the right. I can go lower and it moves to the left. Let's delete these two keyframes, these three keyframes. Now I want to talk a little bit about timing. We're going to have a separate video talking about timing and spacing as a concept, but for these curves, I just want you to see something that's going on. Right now, you see that this red curve uh, looks kind of, kind of unique. It's not just a straight line. It goes in a curvy kind of way. And you see that when I play it, let's, let's just get rid of the, of the Y curve for now. Let's just go left to right. You see that when I play it, uh, the ball moves a little slower at first, and then it speeds up, and then before it stops, it kind of slows down again. Now let's see what happens when the curve looks like a straight line. You see, it's moving in a consistent speed. So these curves are can create very different animation, even if the keyframes are exactly the same. I haven't touched the keyframes. They're still the same value at the same place. So why is it acting so differently? That's because of the tangents. The tangents are these purple lines that uh, stand next to the, around the keyframe. What do they do? They control the timing of when the object is gonna reach that keyframe. So I wanna go over three main tangent options that we have. We have more than three, but this is a basic animation uh, video, and I wanted to know the, the necessary tools that you're gonna use most of the time. So the first one that I use is auto tangents. That means that it's always gonna create kind of an ease in, is out feeling. Now you can see, now you understand why the ball slows, slows at, at the beginning and at the end, because the curve starts a little slower, then it, become, it speeds up, here in this section, it's almost a straight line, 
And then before it gets to the second keyframe, it kind of slows down again. The second tangent is the linear tangent. That's what we did before. That means that if the speed is going to be 100% consistent all the time. It's not changing. You see it's a straight line. The third option is the step tangent. And that's used for blocking. That means that we're not going to see any motion until we reach the next keyframe and then the, the ball is just going to jump to that keyframe. So if I play it, it looks like this. Well, as you see at, at the last keyframe, it just moves there. So you use that when you block animation, you just want to get the posing and you don't want to see any of the curves and tangents. So master these three types of tangents and they'll be good enough for 90% of the animation you're ever going to do. I'm going to go back and bring out our Y curve. There it is. One last thing that is really cool to know is that you can scale those curves. Okay, if you move to the scale tool by pressing R, you can actually scale the entire your entire curves based on where your mouse is. So let's say my mouse is at the beginning of the scene. I hold the middle button of the mouse and we scale everything to the beginning. That's gonna make our, anima our animation much faster. See, we can also scale it vertically. So let's say I want my Y curve to be a little, a little less extreme. I don't want it to go so high and so low. I can select it, then stand in the middle, click on the middle button of the mouse. And now I'm scaling everything to the middle. That's going to make my curve a lot less ext extreme. See, now he's moving very, very gently. So that's really good if you just want to select all of your curves, your entire animation setup, and make a small adjustment to it. Move it a little bit to the left, to the right. You can actually like move it around and change the timing. Let's say I want him to start, start going up and down a little after he starts moving left to right. So I can just move it to the right. And now, you see? He starts moving first and then start going up and down a little bit. So that's really good if you just want to select your entire animation and move it around, scale it, make it a little faster, a little slower, a little gentler. So that's all I wanted to go over today. There's, there's obviously a lot of stuff going on in the graph editor, but I don't want to get into it right now because this is a basic course. I want to show you things that will get you animating right now and not just go over each and every tool that we have here. Most of them are not used very often, and the things I've covered in this video should be enough for you to start animating. If you have any questions or comments, please write them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and check out our website, loopanimation.com.